There was a woman named Ava Evans who went on this talk show in Great Britain and she made some comments that were very dismissive of male suicide. I actually listened to you on Trigonometry, which I love too, a great podcast. And um, they cut a very nice soundbite from the exchange that set this whole thing off. I stole their cut of it because I liked how they did it. Here is the thing that got Lawrence upset. He made comments then in response in GB News, which got him ultimately fired. And I think now in jail. Uh, here's what she said. A conservative MP, new role would champion issues such as reducing male suicide. Mm. Would that be something you'd be in favour of? Well, what's interesting about that is the hostility it sometimes faces whenever it comes up. I saw a programme where there was like a feminist academic and a Lib Dem MP, and they were so hostile to this idea. And I thought, if you would, if you flipped those things, i.e., that it's the biggest cause of death for men under fifty is suicide, men are less likely to go to the doctors. You know, men are less likely to maintain friendships. If that was for women, we'd have to look at well, why is society making that happen? Whereas with men, the argument is often, why are they doing that to themselves? So hey, I, I, I'm not like totally wedded to the idea, but the hostility towards the idea, I find it, it instructive. Ava? I think that it feeds into the culture a little bit, this Minister for Men argument. Like in my mind, I think there should be a Minister for Mental Health, which would be all-encompassing. I mean, you've got something like 7 million children waiting for prescriptions for mental health at the moment. It's a crisis that's endemic throughout the country, not specific to men. And I think, you know, a lot of ministers kind of bandy this about to sort of... I'm sorry, but make an enemy out of women, I think. Not you, and I don't think your well, book I, is. I don't, I don't, but I, I think don't, Sunak... I don't accept that. I don't think it is to make an enemy. If we looked at during COVID, men were more, literally more likely to die... Um, from COVID, and I don't really want to cast myself as, as a meninist or one of these guys from sure. the manosphere, because that's not who I am. But I do find it interesting that sometimes the arguments tend to throw it but back. But who was doing all on... the work during COVID? You know, a lot of the time, if you looked into people's households, it was the women who were taking on the laundry, the school uh, the school care, all but, of that. But, but all, as, I'm not disputing any of that. Well, I'm saying that there are specific issues that men face that might warrant specific attention. I mean, literally... The biggest killer of, of men under 50 is suicide. That is an arresting statistic. And if that doesn't warrant specific attention, mental health is an umbrella issue. I have to say that is also because women are unsuccessful. That is a lot of, that is, feeds into that statistic. But it, feel, it feels like, it just doesn't feel like you've got any space for this idea that men might have unique challenges that face them. Well said. He was exactly right. And when you watch the longer clip, you can really, I feel the frustration you felt. She is dismissive at every turn. Over and over, he tried to say, look, because there is a minister for women. <laughs> he was just trying to say, look, men have their own specific mental health issues, and they're, this is the leading cause of death for men under 50, and we really might need somebody to help start looking into this. No, no, no. Even when he said, look how many men died during COVID, and her response was, but look who was doing all the work inside the house. What, what did she do? She was the one making it a tit-for-tat issue refusing to acknowledge the problem. So let's just start there. She, she displays quite a lot of misogyny and I think, you know, genuine misogyny, which is like women did all the housework and all that stuff. I'm a single father. I raise my two boys. I do all the housework. You know, it's like if we're looking for equality in the gender roles, then we we, we should look for genuine equality in the gender roles. What she did and, and, and what really upsets me to this moment is um, diminish the idea that men suffer too. And it's like, how dare you? And then, and then turn around and say to me, oh, you're a, you're a misogynist. It's like, I'm not a misogynist. I'm just going, my point was badly made, right? I, I, I could have expressed it a lot better. But my point is, how dare you belittle the suffering of men? Because when they take their own lives, of which I know at least two, uh, you know that sear into my mind on every every single day they didn't say anything they didn't speak up exactly because of women like her who belittle the idea that men also feel and think and worry and you know and take their own lives as you quite rightly pointed out it's an arresting statistic that this mm -hmm. stuff happens so still to this day a week later i'm sat there going god i'm so angry with you i'm so angry with that Comment being allowed to pass like it, like nothing in the night. I'm, I'm, right. I'm appalled that we live in a country that allows that to happen. The callousness of her tone and the way she addressed this very serious issue, and I feel, I feel it too, Lawrence. I haven't, thank God, lost anybody in adulthood to this, but my cousin shot himself in the head and died when he was 16, and it was the most horrific event of that piece of our family's lives. They've never fully recovered. It's absolutely deeply alarming. And like so many other men and boys, he succeeded, quote unquote, 
on the first try and there was no warning. They didn't know. This is the pattern with men and teenage boys. They don't reach out for help. They don't get diagnosed with anxiety or depression. And even when they do, they're mocked. They're mocked for it. Uh, and yet when they try to kill themselves and they try to die by suicide, they succeed at it. Uh, it doesn't, it, it's not a cry for help. They, they really want to end it. And it's part of because we stick, the reason is we stigmatize mental, mental health. We make them seem weak if they want mental health. And this, what she did on that show is hashtag part of the problem. Yeah, because look, we're facing, and, and all of us would understand that we're facing a massive underreporting of sexual assault in women. And I don't have any female friends who have not had A, really unwanted fem uh, male attention, or, or B, a lot worse. You know, I don't have any female friends who've not been through that. So the, what she's doing essentially is she's undermining her own calls to turn herself into the victim of a situation. And I think yes. that's absolutely morally morally repugnant. So, like, it's amazing that it makes me emotional even now. But it upsets me to hear her say that and to belittle it because I've, you know, I've spoken to people who were driving behind someone in a tank in Basra uh, during the war in Iraq and the tank slipped off the, off the passageway and turned over into a marsh. And they had to comfort someone or an entire tank crew as they sunk into the mud and died. And they, the person that came back was not the person I knew. I didn't know them. They were like a different human being. And you can have all the conversations about the war and everything like that and, and all of that sort of stuff. But the man that I saw was not the same man that I saw when he went away. And... You know, we can we can talk about the fact that women have uh, less opportunities in life. I, I would say that women have as many opportunities in life as men do if they want them. You're living oh, proof yeah, these of days it. for sure. Yeah, and uh, but we can also turn around and say that you know, men ninety nine percent of people who die in war are men. You know, it, formally as opposed to civilian casualties. And you know, th this idea of masculinity being in some way toxic and part of a culture war, which is what she did, which was to diminish the idea that her fellow human beings, you know, created equal in the eyes of God are in some way being used as part of a culture war I find repellent. I, I just, I don't have any other words for it. And I wasn't able to control myself. And what I should have done is I should have attacked her point. But instead, I turned around and said, if you find this, uh, if you end up with a woman like that, you're going to commit yourself to a life of misery. That's what you're going to do because- You know, you know what, a, you a lot of people would agree. But hold on, I, I want to get mm. to your comments in one second, but let's not leave her comments okay. yet. Because what I see in this exchange is her expressing man hatred, misandry. And t that's what you were responding. She's got a long pattern of it, this woman. If you look back through her social media posts, which I know you've put up, she's constantly saying, I wouldn't shag him. I'm not going to shag you. I'm not going to, this is a thing. She, she loves this term and she loves to say it about men who she finds weak or offensive or what have you. And she also referred to men as the, the most potent or most dangerous virus of them all. Um, and then she goes out there and is dismissive over and over of the other guy who's being very respectful, his attempt to say, you know what, men have unique problems and it's manifesting in suicide, something we should, no, no, no. So you respond to what is clearly her hatred of men on some primal level. And you do it in a way that is scathing crass, but heartfelt. You try to use humor. I was there, I watched it. I was sitting on the set watching this happen. Sitting on the set over here, but I was up next on Dan's show. And I totally got where you were coming from, what you were doing. And what happens, it's, it's like more hatred toward a man. Now the hatred this time is toward you in particular. And no one, yeah, okay, fine, you can get, you, can, you should spend one minute talking about the way in which Lawrence expressed himself. But zero minutes were devoted to why? To, to anything she said, to any of her comments. And so I really think that's that's one of the reasons why you're feeling traumatized, that's my word. I think you're feeling that. Like, it, it's now it's happening to you. But I let down men in that situation because I should have said, I should have attacked her point. That would have been better. Because the point is weak. She's weak in, uh, A, what's the point in responding to some shock jock who wants to turn up on TV and say these horrible things and try and increase her profile, God knows for, for what reason. Um, I, I, I do reflect and I do try and adopt some humility in this situation. 
And I thought I let down the side of the argument of the men. Many, many t- thousands of people have contacted me with messages of their partners, their male partners, uh, killing themselves. And this is, uh, as Jeff Norcott quite rightly pointed out on the show, people are, men are killing themselves in great numbers. They're, they're being toxified. They're being, uh, I'd hate to say this in a sort of, in a way which wasn't nuanced, but very, very feminized. And it's, it's, it's very, you know, I feel I let myself down, actually. And that's the bit that upsets me. I should have just turned around and taken her point and attacked it with everything I have, because that's what I usually do. But uh, this particular issue just stigmatised. It got me, it, 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 in woke parlance, it triggered me so much that I just thought, who would want to shag that? And I'm sorry, I'll say it again now that I've been fired. Who, which man, what self-respecting man would want to find himself in a relationship with a woman who hated men that much? Okay, it's happening. Autumn settling in. The Christmas decorations have already made their appearance in corner after corner. I don't know about your neighborhood, but I've already seen them. But before we allow the shopping stress and the madness to take over, take a moment to think about this. Many families have chosen to embrace experiences and family gifts rather than the frenzy of individual shopping. And now is the perfect time to order the ultimate family gift, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. A Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas combines the benefits of both a hot tub and an exercise pool. Michael Phelps Swim Spas come in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small one. Installation can take less than a day. And since it's heated, you can use it year round in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. Order yours today. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK to save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. Masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.